there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. What an absolutely incredibly beautiful day in North Texas. And just another reason for me to feel grateful and blessed. In fact, I've been having a lot of conversations on social media about being grateful. And there's just some people out there who aren't and I don't understand it, but have an attitude of gratitude and you will be so much better off. Let's start with that. I got to play poker at Windstar this week. It's the first time in like six weeks that I played. Um, I kind of made a young guy mad, which is why the title of this, You Mad Bro? <laughs> and we'll go over that hand in a minute along with some other ones. Hey, the Mr. Bill Poker blog has had a little bit of exposure over the last uh, couple of weeks that I haven't told you guys about. So we'll also go over some of that. Windstar Friday Tournament. Uh, Rob and I decided to go up there. Ooh, we drove in his Tesla. Very, very nice. Anyhow, uh, we late regged at the second, just the very, very end of the second level. My very first hand, blinds are at 100, 200. I'm in the small blind with 10 of spades, jack of diamonds. I have 10K in the starting stack. Uh, there's a couple limpers. I call the big blind, makes it 700. I've played against him. He's a good player, and he had about 15K. A uh, couple of people folded, and I called. <clears throat> The flop with 2,300 in the pot came queen of diamonds, queen of clubs, nine of diamonds, and it checked around. The turn, the eight of clubs giving me a straight, yay me. I lead out for 1,500 and he makes the call. The other guy folds. The river now, 5,300 of the pot, comes another eight, the eight of spades. I check, hoping to induce. He does bet 3,500. I make the call. He says, you're good, and shows King Jack. Yay me. So a nice start, and about an orbit later, maybe a little bit longer than that, we're at 100, 200, 200. I'm in the big blind with Jack of Spades, Queen of Spades, the MP1, and the cutoff limp. I go ahead and bump it up to 700, and only the cutoff calls. The flop with 1900 in the pot comes 7, 8, 10. I lead out for 1400, and he makes the call. The turn now with 4700 in the pot is a 6. I'm kind of giving up here unless I hit a 9 later. Uh, it goes check, check, the river, bingo, bongo, the 9. I check, he bets 2000. I raise it up to 12,500 and he makes the call because he had a jack. He had ace jack. He said, Show me your jack queen. And I did. <laughs> Woo, lucky, and I'm running good so far. So after about 15 minutes of the tournament, I have 31,400. I'm probably the chip leader, and uh, however, I lost a few hands, and at break, I had 24,000. And from there, it kind of went downhill. <laughs> Oh well, that's how tournaments go sometimes. So we skip all the way ahead to the 400, 800, 800 level. I have pocket jacks in the big blind. I have 14,500. Uh, the high jack, who's the big stack, makes it 2,500. The small blind goes all in for 10,500. Now, this guy had shoved all in with pocket sixes, pocket eights, ace seven, ace four. So I decided, you know what, I'm ahead of him. I'm going to shove all in also. Hopefully the first guy will fold. So I do shove all in. Unfortunately, the first guy also makes the call. So showing our hands, the hijack has ace of hearts, king of hearts, the small blind, just as I suspected, six of hearts, eight of hearts. <laughs> and I have pocket jack. So I am 44% favorite pre-flop, the ace king is 38%, and the 6-8 is 16%. The flop with 40,300 comes seven of spades, eight of clubs, nine of diamonds. It now goes to the ace king of hearts has only 16%, the 6-8 of hearts has 30%, and I have a 52% chance of winning this hand. It all comes crashing down, however, on the turn with the ace of spades, the ace king is now way ahead, the river's another ace, and variance gets me. I'm out of the tournament. Oh well, that's how it goes. All right, so my buddy Rob went to Solve for Wise MTT training in Las Vegas, three days, intensive training. He came back, he wants to go through it again, so he's going through it with me. I really, really appreciate Rob for letting me in on it, because it's been really, really great. But it does bring up some questions. In fact, here's a clip from another vlog that I did uh, two years ago. So whenever I play in a tournament, or at least the bigger tournaments, then I like to um, say three things I want to do, <clears throat> three things I don't want to do, 
and what are my intentions for this tournament. So for this one, let's see, three things that I want to do. Number one is I want to chip up early. Um, this tends to be the best part of the tournaments for me. I tend to play pretty aggressive and uh, chip up early is always really important to me. Uh, second thing is, even though I just said that, is to also be patient. Uh, don't get married to a single pair like aces. Uh, especially in the middle of the tournament, I tend to be a little bit spewy in the middle of the tournament. Uh, I keep the foot on, my foot on the gas when sometimes I shouldn't. So I want you to be patient, especially in the middle levels of the tournament. Now I look at this clip and I and I look at what Saul for Y is saying, and the two things are not necessarily the same. For example, I said, hey, I want to chip up early. Saul for Y says, don't get involved early. Obviously play if you have a really good hand, but don't take unnecessary chances. I said I need to uh, slow down and take my foot off the gas in the middle of the tournament because that's where I have trouble. Saul for Y says, maybe you should open up a little bit. Now, somehow I would love to marry the two because I do very, very well, extremely well at the beginnings of the tournaments. So Rob and I have talked about this so much and I need to, to maybe change my thinking on this. Anytime you're going to do training or thinking or whatever, you might have to strip out what you already know and replace it with something that might be better. So when you strip out something you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that thing is bad. It just might mean there's something better out there. And given the personalities, the training, and the history of the Solve for Why guys, maybe replacing what I do know now with their stuff would actually be better. I'm working on it. It's very, very difficult to do. It takes a whole mindset change, but uh, I'm looking into it. Again, ideally for me, I'd love to be able to marry the two that I do extremely well at the beginnings of the tournaments, and I actually do very well at the end, and learn uh, the solve for why stuff and put the two together. Um, you know, I've been relatively successful, but I'd like to be able to add some of their stuff in and keep what I'd have, but, but make it even better. So I'm going to let you guys in on some of this solve for why training that I'm doing and tell you what I think. Uh, so far it's been fantastic. It is very, very different from any other training that I've received, uh, because it doesn't necessarily talk about poker, it talks about mindset change and making game plans for how you're going to attack uh, tournament poker. It's very, very interesting. So I go over to the cash game. I'm playing it a 1-3 cash game. Uh, not Didn't start off so well, uh, but this hand I have ace of clubs, king of spades in middle position. I have $195. There's two limpers to me. I decide I'm going to bump this up pretty good and hopefully I can get somebody uh, to come along. I bet I get 18, the hijack, a good young player, uh, with $300 calls. And so does one of the limpers. So on the flop, there's $64 in the pot. It comes ace of diamonds, four of diamonds, five of spades. I lead out for 22, one third pot. The hijack calls, the other guy folds. The turn with 108 in the pot is the four of spades. I lead out for 42, he shoves all in, he has me covered, I go ahead and make the call. The river, five of clubs, I don't like it, but he has ace of hearts, queen of hearts, and my ace king is better. Okay, so let me set up this next hand a little bit. Um, I'm playing 1-3. Uh, a young professional named John Bennett, who many people know at Windstar, he travels the circuit. He comes to the table. He's with his girlfriend. He's not playing serious poker. His girlfriend's learning a little bit. And so they're there to have a little bit of fun. I know him a little bit, so we're talking and stuff like that. It's, we're having a good time. Nobody's getting too excited. And then one of his younger friends from the table over there says, hey, you guys got a seat over there? So he comes and joins the table, and he's a really good young player also. And they start mixing it up quite a bit more. Bigger pots, bigger bets, and so now the game is turning a little bit. So we're starting to straddle some, and this other guy that joined the table, he had straddled a couple times, and he raises each time he has a straddle, setting up this hand. So our young aggro friend is on the button. He straddles the $6, which is the maximum. He only has $185. Uh, I have ace of spades, seven of clubs. On the button, I have $700. So I'm doing very well. I'm up like $400 in the game so far. 
Uh, there are two limpers for the six dollars. I limp the small blind limps and now the young aggressive guy under the gun makes it forty dollars. There's two folds. I think about it I thought I don't want to call forty dollars here. I either need to fold or if I think I'm ahead or if I think he can't call then I need to raise it up and that's exactly what I do. I go all in the guy behind me doesn't have very much and the only other player is the young guy and he's only got 140 left. So I don't think he can call me very often here unless he happens to get lucky and wake up with a really, really good hand. But most of the time he's just raising here with anything. Nine, six, jack, four. Uh, okay, he could have ace king or he could have good hand. Most of the time I think I'm way ahead here with an ace. The small blind folds and this guy shrugs his shoulders and says, all right, okay, I guess I'm all in. And he makes the call. Uh-oh, I'm probably behind. So it's like a $400 pot and the board comes two, three, five on the flop, bingo bongo four on the turn and a seven on the river. And so I announce I have a straight. He didn't really seem to excited about that but when i turned over my ace with a seven <laughs> it was a seven offsuit oh my goodness he was not very happy he had pocket nines oh my gosh you'd have thought that i killed babies or something because he berated me for about 10 minutes uh he was talking about i guess nobody here knows what a range is and then he would wait for a few minutes and then he would make another comment like i hadn't been playing aggressive and i and now all of a sudden i make a big bet and you just shove right into me and i tried to tell him hey i realized what i was doing i know that it's high variance i just didn't think you could call me and he did not like that and he was pretty much he belittled me for 10 minutes which <laughs> i kind of understand but i also think that hey if you are a really really good player and i'm a fish then don't belittle me don't tap the glass baby and maybe those guys recognize me and they know that i'm not really the biggest fish in the house in the pond anyhow um you know i think those guys probably give me some respect although after that play i'm sure that guy was not happy and maybe he would say next time that he wouldn't give me any respect but i tried to explain to him hey i simply don't think that you can call here uh on so many of your hands that you're raising with and but he didn't like it probably just simply because he lost i don't know so in my head i'm thinking you mad bro <laughs> you mad, i shouldn't bro. think that that's not Are very nice mad, but uh, it's happened to me many, many times and, and you know, with the young players a lot of times, especially really good young players like that, you can't just let them walk all over you, so I didn't. And I got lucky. And I'm happy. You mad, bro? Hey guys, uh, Friday night at Windstar, Rob and I decided to come up here and play a little uh, tournament. It was a $100 tournament. How'd you do? Uh, we chopped seven ways. Not we. I was not part well. of the we. <laughs> You cheered me on. <laughs> yeah, so there was a $100 tournament. What did you guys chop for? Uh, $9.15. $9.15. Not so bad. I went and played in the little teeny wee one three game, and I ended up cashing out for about $900. So I was, I, I didn't make as much as you, but I did okay. I made $15 more. <laughs> no, no, no. I cashed out for $900. Oh. I was in for $300 plus $100. So I made, uh, I made almost $600. So not so bad. All right. Poker peeps out. So I've had a couple of other vloggers mention me recently. I was interviewed by LO8 Grinder uh, and put on his vlog this week. Uh, it was a long, long interview. It took three hours. He put a vlog up of my interview. If you haven't seen it yet, it's kind of interesting. Also, I would love for some of you guys to subscribe to his channel. If you play Omaha, he, he does his vlog on Omaha. He's a good guy. He's helped me out many times, so he could use the subscribers. So if you have any interest in that, then, then give, uh, give LO8 Grinder a shot. The other one was a number of weeks ago, but uh, Brad Owen finally opened up a package that I sent him like a year ago. <laughs> and here's the clip of that one. This one here, Mr. Bill Burford. Bill, Mr. Bill, poker vlogger as well. So looks like he made a uh, poker chip says brad i love your vlog and humor pretty funny it is one of the one of the reasons for starting my mr bill poker vlog here's a homemade omaha button made by my daughter oh that's pretty awesome i use mine as a card protector i really appreciate getting a pick of the wsp with you and andrew it's great getting to talk with you guys for a few minutes please invite me to the next vloggers game i guarantee i can be there my wife works for 
uh, American Airlines, so I fly free. Mr. Bill Poker, cool man. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Mr. Bill's vlogs, check those out. Uh, <clears throat> he's a cool guy, I've hung out with him a few times. I think he sent me that a while ago. So I've played with Brad a few times and he is really, really a good guy. He'll probably be at Runner It Up Reno in case I go there this weekend. But uh, I really appreciate the kind words. So Brad, if you ever watch mine, which you probably don't, <laughs> then thank you for the kind words. Uh, very, very nice of you. All right, guys, I'm trying to decide. I may be going to Run It Up Reno on Friday, this Friday, October what, 18th or something like that, and play in their main event. So if you happen to be at Run It Up Reno, look for me. I may be there. Hopefully I will be there. I'll make some announcements on my community tab. So let's end this vlog right here. Things are growing great. I am extremely, extremely blessed, as are you. Uh, let's realize our blessings. Let's live with an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful. And thank you guys for watching and subscribing and commenting and talking to me and doing all those fun things. Another reason for me to be grateful. Um, so thank you guys so much. I will see you guys all next week. You have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.